we can't recruit all the people that want to come here, you know, but I think we, we, we try to recruit good students, good players, but also people that, that, that are a good fit for Notre Dame, people that are good, good guys. Boss was probably sick of me freshman year because I was the kid who wasn't on the team, kept begging him, um, tried to figure out a way to make it work. So one thing, he sent me an email. It was kind of a harsh email. It was like, uh, I, and it was fair, honestly, it was fair at the time. But he said the chances of making on the team full time are a long shot. But it was something I was really excited about. Couldn't have been more excited to be going to school at Notre Dame and then also having the chance to try and piece the soccer in later on. I feel like there's a really unique culture here that I really enjoyed. Um, so I feel like that was almost the biggest thing that kind of, it's hard to put your finger on, but it's so cheesy, but the kind of feeling that you get when you go somewhere and you know you kind of fit in and it feels right at the time. So that was the biggest reason why I wanted to come here. So when I got to Notre Dame, I went to that first tryout freshman year and put a lot of time in, in the summer working and was so excited about this opportunity. and. I was lucky enough to get invited back to come for the second tryout where the walk-ons are mixed in with the team for the first time and then uh, and <laughs> there was such a high level, such a fast speed of play and it was just so difficult and obviously didn't go perfectly and things didn't end up working out. That's kind of where I got cut that first year. I was really bummed. I was, I know it was such a tall task and the boss said, but if you're around for this summer, the guys will be around, you can play with them. But I wouldn't sign up for classes just for that purpose which is what I ended up doing. I signed up for summer school just so I could be here and have a chance to practice with the guys because I knew that was the best chance that I'd have to develop and grow over the summer. Um, I also spent a ton of time on my own my freshman year, whether it was running on my own, lifting weights on my own, going out to fields by myself and playing, just really trying to do everything I could to put myself in the best position if there were to be another chance to try out. Um, I'd go over to the Rock, the Rockney gym, go down in the not sure what sport there's in, I don't know if it's um, squash, but they have little indoor courts. I'd go in there, kick the ball off the wall, work on first touch, dribbling, all that sort of stuff in there as well. Yeah, so I would try and spend an hour, two hours every single day on my own, um, trying to improve and keep developing. came back, same process as year one, and I was much more confident this year. That got pat past the hurdle where I was tripped up the first year. The end of the year came and things had gone well enough that Boston invited me back to play in the spring for that year. So the next spring started and I was doing everything full time with the team. That meant the, the runs, that meant the lifts, that meant practices, meetings, everything. And unfortunately, I wasn't kept on to the team full time for the next year. At that point, honestly, I was almost kind of thought about stopping playing. I thought maybe this is what I was meant to get out of the experience. I got to go through a year where um, I had exposure and got to play with the team and meet the guys and make great friends and have a cool experience. And um, it just wasn't meant to be at that time. Going into that summer, I kind of thought that um, I might be done at that point. Thank goodness I didn't stop. Work, e. Well done, Ian. It's like corner to corner. <laughs> Great ball, Paul. Well done. Touch, Spence. Good ball, Paulie. Love the speed. Sorry, right, sorry. Right, find again. Find again. You're good. We're good. <laughs> My legs are too small to reset. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you, you've got uh, the Kurt Romer, who's a, a, a walk-on senior. Love Kurt. Everybody loves Kurt. He's no, just, uh, no, no, no. You know, I don't think Kurt's going to see a lot of minutes, but he's just, he's a good player. He'd be small, but very technically very good and tactically smart. And, and, and just, you know, you need you need people in your squad sometimes that everybody likes. I mean, and he comes to play, he loves his soccer. He comes to play every day. And when you see, here's Kurt, who does, trains to 100%, plays everything he does to 100% and he's possibly not going to see a lot of game time than the other guys. There's no, there's no room for ego when you see Kurt working. So he, he's fabulous at that. And how about this? Kurt Romer checking in for Notre Dame. The walk-on senior getting his first action in a Notre Dame uniform. Folks, a great story on Kurt Romer. Was in the ACC tournament 
and we had played Pitt a couple weeks before in a regular season game. And I had an interview in Chicago that Friday morning and we were playing against Pitt in the regular season that Friday night. And as my dad drove me back, he said, I have a good feeling that you guys are gonna do really well tonight and you're gonna get put on. And so that game ended up not going as well as we had hoped. <laughs> um, but funny enough, it was almost foreshadowing for the fact that later on we got another chance at Pitt. Things went really well, we played really well, and that actually came through and I did get to go on at the end. Tried out for the team in years past, didn't make it, and in his senior year, finally makes the cut. And you hear about this kid, the nicest kid you'll ever meet, and a great chance for this senior from Glenview, Illinois. Not that I needed validation, but um, I feel like that moment kind of made everything all worth it. Mueller to take it. It's a well-struck one ahead. He attempted in the back of the net, and Wisconsin has won. The Badgers will move on to the third round in the NCAA championship after that heading attempt, and what a finish it was. one nothing the final here at Alumni Stadium. It, I, it, it hit me really hard, honestly. Not necessarily right when the goal went in, but um, as I thought about it more and more, as I, I don't know, I feel like when, when there's a moment like that and something kind of comes to an end as it did, there are so many highs and lows and it was such a crazy, winding, difficult journey. Um, and I remember going out in the field and um, Kyle Diedrich, one of the guys, one of my good friends, just gave him a hug and we were both crying for a while. It was just, it was just so emotional, um, much more emotional than I was expecting. And, I had my parents there and sisters and everybody goes through such a difficult journey together, but I think the journey I took was, um, I don't, it was very taxing at times. Um, but just to think about everything that went into it, everything that I got out of the experience and, and all of that was on my mind at the time. Um, but I think most importantly what was going through my head is just, I was more sad than anything just to think that the season was over because I became such good friends with the team and it's just such a special group to be a part of. I think that was what made me the most sad was thinking about how lucky I was to have this experience and meet all these great guys and make these incredible relationships. Um, it's also, like I said, it's been the best experience in my life to get to be a part of the team. So working through that adversity and really keeping, like, keeping concentration on the thing you're passionate about and the end goal will lead to really just an amazing experience. And that's what happened for me.